The sixth seed BYU is playing against 11 seed Duquesne to begin in the first round of the NCAA tournament. So yesterday we were discussing more of like why we felt like BYU got jaded a little bit with not receiving a five seed, maybe even a four seed, and how they slid to the six. So we're turning the page now, Jerem, and looking specifically at the Dukes of Duquesne. And we mentioned, both of us yesterday, like we like the matchup. The big picture is this is a good matchup. Even though BYU is in the six seed line, we would prefer Duquesne as an 11 against any over any of the 12 seeds yes. that are playing against the Absolutely. five seeds. The question is, why? What are the reasons? In fact, give me three reasons why you love the matchup specifically against Duquesne in this 6-11 scenario. Okay, one is what BYU does and who BYU is. Five shooters on the court at a time from three with Ali Khalifa. I think Foos is going to have some moments to go one-on-one -on -one and perhaps have a double-figure type game. Ali Khalifa is so unique in his ability to pass and find cutters. Um, BYU's overall three-point shooting and the ability to just have diversity of guys able to make shots. Now, when BYU doesn't make shots, of course, it doesn't go well, um, and it didn't go well against Texas Tech. Does it go well for any team that doesn't make shots? Teams that get at the rim and go to the free throw line, yes. And B but BYU relies on its percentage of points more from three, more than most. But it's BYU's uh, one of BYU's superpowers is great bench, great unselfishness, assists per game, great three-point shooting. Um, and so uh, that's the first reason. Number two is Duquesne should probably be a 12 or 13. I look at the 12s. And I think uh, all those 12s are probably better than Duquesne. Yeah. So BYU got a nice matchup in terms of where Duquesne fell in the bracket. Um, 83 in net, 90 in Ken Palm, two quad one wins. One was last week versus Dayton. So they had one quad one win going in the last week. Three quad three losses. Like th this is, this is a, a team that, hey, BYU finished tied for fifth in the Big 12. You're supposed to beat this team in that first round. Yeah. But it's just one game. And reason number three, offensively, Duquesne is mid 166 yes. in efficiency, tempo and possession are 200 plus. They don't particularly shoot it well. They don't shoot it poorly. They are the A10 champs. Like, don't get me wrong, good team. BYU's got to show up and win. But, like, if you're telling me BYU's not playing James Madison or Grand Canyon or, you know, there's some other compelling New Mexico as a 12, hey, I'll take an 11. I'm not going to complain about being a six. Surely, uh, if yeah. BYU beat Iowa State and they, you know, maybe beat Texas Tech, they, they probably are a four, and maybe they're in Salt Lake instead of Kansas. Who knows? But uh, those are the three reasons I like the matchups, man. So, Duquesne, from a standpoint of number one to number 68 of the overall tournament seeding list, of course, BYU is 17. We documented that at length and what that should have meant for BYU on the seed line, but didn't. Yeah. Duquesne is 46, which would fall in the 12-seed scenario. The 12 seeds, if it all held true, would be 45 through 48. So they jump a few spots to get into that 11 seed. And again, if you missed it yesterday, there is conversation that it was, whether it was VCU who had better metrics than Duquesne, better numbers in the net and in Ken Pomeroy's index, that regardless, it was going to be VCU or Duquesne in Omaha. And so... Duquesne with those lower numbers, yeah, benefits BYU. They slide into that 11 spot. And we're going to overlap a little bit in some of our reasoning for why we love this matchup against Duquesne, but that's okay. And I'm, I'm going to start however we... Frankly, that's most days on this program. I'm going to start with <laughs> bounce-back ability. Specifically, BYU in the last five losses, they have won five straight after every one of those losses in February and March specifically. Let's rewind and remember, shall we? Lost to Oklahoma on February 6th. Bounced back and beat Kansas State four days later. Then BYU goes on the road and loses in Stillwater. Inexplicable! Oh no, they gotta come home and play Baylor. What are we gonna... They beat number 11 Baylor. February 24th. I think that was a quote from Cougar Board, by the way. Lost to Kansas State on the road. Oh, great. Now they're going to go for sure 0-2 oh, on this Kansas road trip. They bounce back and win at Fog Allen Fieldhouse against 7th ranked Kansas in March. Lose to number 6 Iowa State. Oh, such a letdown. Oh, Brutal. the three turnovers, the Brutal. air ball at the end. Oh, is there going to be like just this hangover? No. BYU routed Oklahoma State specifically in the second half and run away. So, again, five straight wins after a loss for BYU and frankly you can go back to losing to Houston and then bouncing back and winning a huge game against Texas in Pro Bowl in late January so I like BYU's bounce back ability I fear any team that has to play BYU after a loss that, for their chances
Okay, I think BYU has figured something out here where they just like rally the troops. Like it's a to me, it's a thing. And they're good when they're ticked off about something. Yes, and they have plenty of reason to be ticked off right now. Mark Pope was very like, we're not worried about the seed. He did mention like reasons why they could be. Yes, they are. I think deep down yes. they're probably bugged. But on the surface, it's like, no, we're on to just, we're six, great, we're playing Duquesne, let's win that, let's see what happens against Illinois or Moorhead State, and yeah. But this team has rallied behind a motivating point. Before the season, it was being number 13 in the preseason poll. Then after non-con, it was no one thinks we're that good. Then it was 0-2, 2-4 in league. And then it was, well, no, I guess we can't win these big games against some of the best teams. Yeah, they've showed up. Or, and then it was, we had no guys in the all Big 12 first, second, and third teams. Um, and so, yeah, BYU needs to win at least one game. Let's go. There's okay, that was reason number one. Chip on the shoulder. Okay? Yeah. So I know it's a lengthy reason number one, but I believe in BYU's sure. bounce back ability to go with their burst ability, specifically when teams are turnover prone. BYU has taken advantage. When BYU can score in those bursts and they're getting some turnovers and they have those fast break threes, yeah. those are just backbreakers. Okay, BYU is going to do this. The Dukes are a little turnover prone. 17.5% of the possessions are being turned over. That's number 213 in the country. They're not great with ball security. Mm. This is an opportunity for BYU. And you mentioned the Dukes' middling, mediocre offense. 166 in adjusted it's not good. It's not bad. offensive vision. It's just yeah. kind of meh. It's but, literally mid. So they're yeah. mid, but they t they're turnover prone. Okay, So that knocks it down a few notches, if you will. BYU has an opportunity there to really exploit some things and then just those backbreaker threes, those, those live ball turnovers, the terminal turnovers that turn into points that Blaine Fowler talks so often about. BYU, I believe, can take advantage of this against Duquesne. And number three, they're not very big, Jerem. They're, they're, they're one of the smaller teams in the country. So to me, immediately I just think, all right, I might have We can one. quantify this, by the way. They're, two, 284. they're 284 in height, Yes, average height. Average height per team in the yeah. country out of 363 teams or whatever it is right now. David Dixon, don't call me Nixon, 6'9", uh, Dusan, Mohorchich, uh, and then uh, the other Foos is 6'7". You know what You know what that me. screams to me? One-on-ones with Foos. Foos! He's going to have some in chances the post. to score, yeah. Yes. Foos will not, he's not intimidated in large part by a lot of I think Size they're going to look the him into the, in the eye, Spence, and he's going to say, let's get oh, it. He's going to say, okay, cool. cool. <laughs> okay, I, so I think BYU can take advantage of the lack of size and size depth on Duquesne's roster. Give me Foosh Traore there. Those are the three reasons. Bounce back ability, the Dukes are turnover prone, and Foosh should be able to take advantage in the post. Yeah, okay, topic two. Give me a reason you're concerned about the match. Win one for the Gipper yeah. is a real thing. Yeah. Like, it's a real thing. Coach Dambrot has gotten the Dukes to their first NCAA tournament since 1977. Like They are very excited. They should be. Yeah. A, a, 47 years? A 47, can you imagine? 47 year drought. Does this show exist if you does not make <laughs> no, the tournament? Of not seven. making the NCAA tournament? <laughs> They're stoked to be there, and Almost they should be. Almost a half century. Just won the A-10, man. 77. The Miracle Bowl against SMU hadn't even happened. No. It right. was three years away. Yes. That, not, neither of us were born the last time. You were almost Dukes. born. Yeah, no. We're, we're like, born. Four more years. Okay. <laughs> You're not that much younger than me. Good grief. Okay. But win one for the Gipper. Meanwhile, Shep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> win one for the Gipper is a real thing, I think, here. I, it's been a magical run. They've sure. Won, they've won eight straight. They got back to the tournament. We were joking yesterday. Like, oh, you're good. You're like, good. You're good. Uh, what, amazing you lose run. to BYU. Like, no one's going to think about the tournament Coach LeBron game. is a freshman and sophomore. Akron was great. It, BYU experienced this in 2015 against Missouri in football, by the way. Yes. That week. The rallying. Oh, the coach is retiring. Rally. So it's another reason, yeah. Yeah. So that, that one has me concerned. Like, the okay. emotional aspect of that. I mean, we're talking about BYU having a chip on their shoulder. And using that to, like, rally, well, Duquesne is going to use this to rally to yeah. try and win one for the coach. Yeah. Uh, if you want, like, a metric, they play aggressive defense. And they, even though they give the ball away a little bit and are not great with ball security, they force a lot of turnovers as well. So they can muddy a game up. Yeah. And sometimes that can make it super weird in this tournament specifically. Let's, let's quantify that with the metric. So 28th offensive overall. Yep, 28. That's tremendous. They uh, forced team to shoot 31.7% from three, 53rd in the country. 
in A10 play, they were first at 29.5. That is what BYU is hoping to do best, right? Is shoot the three well. And then for me, it's two guards that can change the game. So Dede Grant is the okay. active leader in the NCAA in career games with six or more threes in a game. He has five alone this year. There have been some Dude can fill it up. players that have typically gone nuts against BYU in the recent past. I would say three of the last four games, Spence. There's been a 30 point score. Yes. Um, and then Jimmy Clark, the third, is 10th nationally in steals, 2.37 a game. Seven steals the last two games. As a team, they were number one in the 8 10 in turnover percentage defense, almost 20%. And then he averages 15 a game. So these two guys are the stars. They are the stars for Duquesne. So keep an eye on these guys in this game. They do great. Uh, they're, they're super active. They're going to have the ball high usage rate for these guys. There's other dudes, but if you only know one or two guys, you got to know these two. Day-Day Grant concerns me for sure. Yeah, the number you bring up about the three-point shot. Like, he is get hot. He's the guy that can just scorch you. Now, with that said, Jimmy Clark... Like, was two of 19, I think, or something in the title game. Like, really struggled. So you hope someone goes, uh, you know, crazy cold in a game. But play good D and, uh, you know, make some threes and don't turn it over. Ball, uh, like, limiting to what BYU wants, 13 yeah. or fewer turnovers yes. or 12 or something. Yeah, if you're in single-digit turnovers and, and making 32% of your threes, like, you're in a great spot. Well, here's the thing about BYU. Like, they've been able to endure some of these guys that have just been red hot specifically from Oklahoma State, and then Johnson goes nuts against BYU for UCF and tournament. But didn't it's like, matter. You didn't win matter. by 14. You win because – Javon Small goes off. Yes. You won by 14. Yeah. You typically need more than one. Like, you need a couple of guys there. They got, they got two. So, it, yeah, if you can hold one of them down, I really like BYU's chances in that regard. Okay, our question of the day. How confident are all of you feeling heading into BYU's first-round matchup against Duquesne and why? Nate Kennedy on X answers – I watched the Atlantic 10 final, and the Dukes really struggle to score. Yeah. If BYU can shoot better than 30% from three, they win going away. Can we just, oh, settle, just, 30. Can we just wow. settle on the, the metrics wow. that have been victorious for BYU all year? 32% is the number. Shoot 32% from the three-point line. What is it, 21 and typically, two? Typically, if you shoot 32% from the three-point line, you're BYU. Because of how many you're shooting, you're making at least 10. You're making at least 10. Come on! Yeah. Like... Yes. Can't, can't just make seven. Can't be crazy cold in the first half and down by 23 like you did against Texas Tech. So let's uh, let's see if BYU can't flex a little bit as a Big 12 team and win yeah. that first-round game, man. Clarissa Weidman on X answers on a scale of 1 to 10. I have a confidence level of 8. BYU should beat the Dukes. They're an 8.5-point favorite last I checked, according to our friends in the desert. It's a big number. But it isn't smart to overlook a team, especially one that is feeling hot going into the dance. They yeah, they're hot. Won, they have won eight straight. They were a six seed and won their tournament. How about that? They weren't like the two or three. No, this was the Took year. Took out Dayton this was on the, the way. the year of bid stealers. And the year, yeah. like the number one seeds in the conference tournaments did Pro not do well. No, that's why there were so many. Yeah, that's why Oklahoma's not playing anymore. Hashtag BYUS on X, Facebook, and Instagram. How are all of you feeling about BYU's matchup against Duquesne and why?